Hi, this is Tracy Grant, and I'm the Director of Academic Success and Advising, and you're listening to the 10-Minute Tips Podcast. Today, I'd like to talk to you about what to do if you're failing a class. The first thing I'd like to emphasize, and I mean with bright neon lights, is if you find yourself at a point in time and that you're failing a class, is that you don't turtle up and disappear. Students often get embarrassed or they feel ashamed that they've missed a paper or a project or totally bombed a test. So they stop going to class, they stop responding to the professor's emails or to my emails, and they totally ghost us. That's the worst possible response if you find yourself failing a class. Let me provide a little perspective. I've never seen a student fail, and I mean get an F or a final grade in a class, who showed up to class, who turned everything in, and engaged with the class. Now, you might earn a D if the subject matter is really difficult for you, and I'm not saying that, if you, that you can't fail if you're engaged and you're trying, but it's very unlikely. So let's talk about what to do if you find yourself failing a class. The first thing is you need to understand why you're failing. You gotta check the syllabus so that you can understand what part of the class is lacking, what's hurting your grade, and what you can do moving forward. There are three parts of a class that contribute to your grade. Assignments, papers, projects, presentations, all fall under this category. Tests, and then attendance. These I'm gonna to refer to as the big three, okay? So if you understand from the syllabus What's the impact of one of these three, of what you may have missed or done poorly on, you'll ultimately have, what impact will that ultimately have on your final grade? It may be that you're failing at this point in time because maybe you've missed 30 points out of only 50 that were possible so far. But there's 500 points possible in the whole class. So you have lots of time and lots of points to make up and, and still earn a really decent grade. So not, but if you at that point look and go, oh, I'm failing, and you give up, you really have given up way too soon, okay? So let's go through these big three and kind of develop strategies for each of them. Looking first at assignments. Let's look at this scenario if you've done poorly on an assignment. I used to teach writing classes, and sometimes a student doesn't, understand this particular kind of writing or they didn't adjust very quickly to the expectations of that class that I was teaching. And so they maybe did poorly on the first assignment, you know, got a C minus or a D or even failed a paper that they actually did and actually turned in. That's a situation where you need to meet with a professor. Again, back to my first point, you can't disappear out of embarrassment. You can't stop going and give up. This is a time to fully engage. Understand, what am I doing wrong? What kind of corrections and adjustments do I need to make? Maybe you need to seek out other resources, writing center, tutoring, meeting with your professor, so that you can now understand the expectations and start to work towards meeting them. What if you completely missed a paper? You didn't get to class and turn it in on time, or you were in class but didn't have it done. You need to understand, maybe from the syllabus or in a conversation with your professor, can I turn this in late for reduced points? Again, that engagement is going to be really critical. Now, let me just kind of take a side note and give you a word to the wise here. Be honest in this conversation with your professor and take responsibility. You are going to meet up with some of the kindest, most willing to help you people you'll ever come across. But they're going to be cynical about some of stories that might get told because your professors have been doing this a long time and they've heard all kinds of stories. And let me tell you, students are not kind to their grandparents in these scenarios. Students throw their grandparents under the bus all the time when they've missed work and they haven't turned something in. Well, my grandma's in the hospital or my grandpa had a stroke or one of my grandparents died. Grandparents cannot have this kind of uh, death rate and illness rate that we hear about 
in academia. So don't throw your grandparents under the bus. Take responsibility for your irresponsibility and please don't couch it in Christianese. This is the other thing that we hear at a Christian university. Can I please get some grace on this? Just take responsibility for your choices without couching it in that Christian language. It's really annoying. Also, some things like, I'm sorry I was late to class. I decided to stay after chapel and pray. Your responsibility is to let your yes be yes, do the work, and show up on time. There's a lot of hours in the day for you to pray, and class time is not one of them. Okay? And now, if there's obviously, if there's an emergency, there's a legitimate emergency. But the rate at which we hear these things is not legitimate. Okay? So, um, moving on. Assignment. Now, failed test. If you have failed a test, there can be a lot of reasons why you failed a test. One, you didn't study. Again, back to my previous conversation. That's on you. You need to be responsible to do your work. Sometimes you didn't study enough, you know, for one hour the night before. That's not enough. So you need to study more and spread out over time. Sometimes you didn't study the right material. Students often feel like a study guide is a constitutional right. And for a professor to put something on the test that wasn't on the study guide is a violation of your constitutional right. That's just not true, okay? I really recommend that students talk with their professors before the test. Understand how the test is gonna be configured. Get advice on how to study. Get advice on test-taking skills for that particular kind of test. But if not beforehand, for sure after a test has not gone well, meet with your professor, do it in office hours before class or after class is not the best time to sit down and talk with a professor about a test. What's critical here is if you did not understand the material and that's what contributed to you doing poorly on a test is that you meet with your professor because the material is going to be critical as the class moves on and maybe builds on that material or that material is going to come back and be present in the next test or in the final, you've got to go back and shore up that understanding. Maybe there's tutoring available. For sure, there's the professor's office hours. That, again, back to my first point, that's going to require your engagement. Okay? Last point, we've covered attendance or we've covered assignments. We've covered tests. Let's talk about attendance. Sometimes professors build into the point system points for attendance. These are the easiest points to gather up. You simply go to class and you earn points for doing so. The reasons that professors do that is because they know you will do better on your assignments. You will do better on your tests if you're present in class. Also, You will understand the expectations on the assignments. You will understand the material. You will understand the learning that's supposed to be taking place if you're present in class. Not going to class is like a bird saying, oh, no thanks, I don't want to fly. I'll just walk. I will make this much harder on myself all along the way. So the big three, assignments, tests, attendance. Any one or a combination of these three could be contributing to why you're failing a class. Make sure you understand and engage with your professor so you can correct course, write your ship, and pass your classes. Thanks a lot and have a great day.